All right, we're back with uh, Breakfast and Plus TV Africa and, of course, a very interesting conversation up next. Uh, uh, we're talking about payment gateways and, of course, the financial sector in the country, how medium, small, medium, micro and medium scale enterprises rather can uh, participate in this uh, digital uh, financial sector in terms of payments. Um, well, Nigeria has over 44 million micro, small, and medium enterprises. These are known as MSMEs. And most of them lack access to the digital economy, uh, a global interconnection of um, uh, computers and networks, uh, network infrastructures, through which goods and services change hands across the world. Well, um, the, in recent times, the Central Bank of Nigeria has introduced measures to deepen and expand financial inclusion uh, to connect Nigerian businesses to the digital world. Now, uh, also, the Nigerian Communications Commission, uh, as well as the Central Bank of Nigeria, they have partnered uh, to ensure that licensed mobile network operators uh, make available telecommunications infrastructure uh, and services to deposit money banks uh, to drive micro, small, medium, and large businesses. Now, today's global economy is driven in the digital space provided by companies with the requisite infrastructure for electronic payments and e-commerce. How can uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises in Nigeria gain access to the digital economy? It's a focus on this first uh, segment, the second discussion, rather, on the breakfast this morning. I'd like to say good morning to our guest who's with us in the studio. We're so happy to have him after some some years or months of uh, <laughs> of having you on Zoom. Uh, Shegun Shopiton is the chairman of ACT Network. Um, but for the purposes of this discussion, you know, um, how do you like the listeners to yeah, I mean, address you? I'm, I'm a principal partner at Woodridge and Scott Consulting. Um, we're, we're a financial consulting firm amongst other things you know so interesting this falls very comfortably within fantastic me. i wear a lot of hats <laughs> i am telling you all right uh, um but uh, i mean you were saying to me before you we started the conversation yeah. it was quite easy for you to get to the office the studio because the roads are quite yeah. free uh, public yeah. holidays absolutely all right so happy Beautiful. holidays to you the same to you all right um, happy um, independence um, to nigerians i'm telling maybe if we had more of these payment gateways working yeah. for the msmes people will stay at home more absolutely and the roads will be more free absolutely. like you want it to be absolutely. um when we talk about payment gateways Gateways. For those who, who want to know what we mean, what are the payment gateways? Um, so basically, you know, when you have these types of conversations, it's important to recognize that we're speaking with um, a large, a vast public. So yeah. some will be experts and some will know absolutely nothing about what we're, what we're talking about. So um, I usually want to come from that perspective. Um, so to the layman, to the average person out there, a payment gateway is simply, let's look at it and uh, break down that name, so a payment gateway. So it's basically a gate that allows payments to happen between parties, different parties. Um, parties in this case will be um, a merchant, um, um, a customer or a buyer, and then there are two, their respective uh, sources of money where they keep their money. So where you keep your money could be cash in your pocket. It could be your bank account. You know, so for the merchant, usually it will be their bank account somewhere. But for the buyer, it could be you, you have cash on you, and then you take the cash there, um, and somehow that cash, you know, maybe using a POS service, can get converted and then transferred to the gentleman that you're buying from. Um, or it could be from your bank account, and then if it's from your bank account, the money must move from your bank account through the payment gateway to the bank account of the merchant. Okay. So basically, the gateway service providers will sit in between um, the various parties. I mean, we've come a long way from the early days of um, cashless policy. Mm -hmm. Was it Solodo or Sanusi, one yeah, of the two? 2012. Yes, indeed. So that's yeah. Solodo then. Yeah. Um, and people were, okay, they don't want us to, they want to take our money away. Or People were not too comfortable and, uh, you know, we're not understanding what it meant. We're mm -hmm. a bit apprehensive. Yeah. But we've come a long way now. Absolutely. You're able to move around without money in your pocket for a, a, the whole year, really. Absolutely. Um, uh, what are the advantages of integrating yeah, the MSMEs in Nigeria into the various payment gateway services in the country? Okay, so I think it's important to first of all understand that a lot of um, SMEs are integrated in, you know, some measure or the other. What we want to do is to achieve a greater degree of integration uh, for a larger number of them. Just like you said, you know, for the 4 million SMEs in Nigeria is, is a huge number. And then very crucially, most of them operate in the informal economy. And I think this is where the, the conversation about the benefits come into play. Um, 
depending on whose statistics you're looking at, we all know the problems with data that we have in Nigeria, but depending on who you're talking to, um, the informal economy is between 50, 57, 50, between 55 to 65 percent of the of the size of the entire economy, you know. So, which means the larger chunk of economic activity is not being captured by government for tax payment purposes and for data statistics generation generation purposes. So, um, if we're able to bring more of the MSMEs, you know, using uh, these payment gateways into the formal sector. The, the, the benefits to the economy is, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's tremendous. Right. From the revenue side for government, it means that you can tax um, these people more. Um, and when we say taxes, we're not talking of anything onerous. As we speak today, anyway, most MSMEs pay taxes to somebody. But usually it's not government. Usually it's, it's non-state actors. So it's not captured? Yeah, so it's not captured. So government loses that revenue. And here we are. You know, Nigeria is running a deficit of as much as 13 trillion naira. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Meanwhile, we have so many people operating in the economy who are not captured in tax net. So if we're able to bring the MSMEs into the tax net with the, you know, instrumentality of getting them on, integrated into the payment gateways, then the, everybody benefits, including they themselves, right. you know. Um, so, so I think for me that's a key benefit. Of course, there's also the... Um, issue of velocity of transactions. If you're able to bring people on board into the into the um, uh, the various payment services available, then you can do more transactions. Just like you said, you know, from the comfort of your room, from the comfort of your home, from the comfort of your office, you can do your transactions. Thank God that you know uh, with COVID, um, logistics services also exploded. So you know, um, bikes, delivery bikes, and all of that is it, it's a normal thing in Nigeria today. Uh, well, at least in Lagos, and then I think other parts of the country are catching up as well. So, which means that if MSMEs are able to take full advantage of the payment services that are available, and then integrate themselves into the logistic services that are available, then people can do far more transactions because they don't have to suffer the inconvenience of traffic and what have you to get their things done. You know, so, and then, you know, the economy grows thereby. One, one question I've always, uh, I haven't cracked this question, and I, I'm hoping you can crack it for me over the years. Mobile money. Mm -hmm. What is the problem? Mm -hmm. Go to other African countries, it's working perfectly. Yeah. Nigeria, they've huffed, they've puffed. The uh, mobile networks, they've tried, they've done advertisements, <laughs> and people are not buying it. What is the problem? Why is mobile money not catching up among SMSMEs? Because that, that is where, if you look at that sector in other African yeah. countries, yeah. It's, it's catching on. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's just a late adoption issue. And I think we will catch up. Um, so, so just like you say, if we if you bear in mind that um, in, um, one, internet penetration okay. is increasing significantly, um, um, not the subscriber base of the country has exploded in the last 10 years. I think we're, we're talking of about 160-something one, million subscribers on the, on the various mobile telecoms networks right now, um, active ones. You know, so that is a veritable base as far as the mobile money service is concerned. But uh, we started the game a bit late. Um, in places like Kenya, that's the normal way of payment for most people. Now, bearing in mind that um, even in the hinterland, um, your, even the farm, the farmer, the lady that goes to the farm, um, the fisherman or the fisherwoman, whatever they are, they have mobile phones. They may not be smartphones, but they have mobile phones. Um, so um, the mobile money service, you are right, uh, it needs to do better, but I think they're on the right path. So um, look it's, at, it's, it's, maybe like M-Pesa, Yes. Yeah, yeah. So in Nigeria, I mean, I don't want to do. Yeah, uh, no, 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 I know your policy. <laughs> <laughs> I know your policy. Because they've so, spent so much money. Yes, you know, yes. one of them did uh, slow, slow adverts. But, you know. but some of them are doing. They're, they're really doing well. If you look at the numbers, especially the growth statistics. Really. Yeah. Uh, for example, um, in the first quarter of um, this year, compared with the first quarter of last year, was a 172 percent growth in mo number of mobile money transactions. That's, that's huge, because wow. you're almost 
uh, doubling, in fact, you are more than doubling the volume of transactions and the value of transactions happening via mobile money service providers. There seems to be a high adoption of uh, this POA, POS yeah. method of, 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 um, of you know, sending money and receiving yeah. money. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's almost like a little bank. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's phenomenal, isn't it? What, 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 is, what, is, behind, what is behind that? And is, is that the, the, the way we should go? Or should we encourage you know, a change in strategy? Why, why, why is that catching up? No, I, I think we have to move further down the value chain the payment service value chain, you know, from that. Because for me, I have a problem with that because it's still cash-based. Um, based. Okay. It's cash-dependent heavily. And there's a huge problem with that, you know. So we need to move people from doing POS-based cash transactions to moving money from accounts, even if they're mobile money accounts. And I think that's why these mobile money service providers are crucial to the uh, entire... Um, electronic payment um, um, ecosystem. Um, right now, there's, there's this fraud that happens, you know. Uh, uh, people, you lose your phone, and these smart boys um, very quickly, you know, I mean, I, I don't know how they do it. In seconds, they've hacked your password and everything, and they moved your money. When they move your money, how do they get it? The POS cash transaction providers. So, so they withdraw, they, they, they transfer the money to a POS person. Even when they hack people's accounts, let's forget the phone. You know, where if you are careless with your PIN or you are careless with your uh, password into your um, um, internet banking or your um, banking app um, uh, uh, services, these guys go into your account, they clear your account, and when you check how the withdrawals were done, you find people's names. But if you pick those people up, you discover that they are POS service providers who who will say they didn't, they don't know, they don't know. So the guy you that we drew. No <laughs> yeah, so you have so nobody to catch. You, you hold the guy for a while. So it has to, we have to move right. beyond the cash part Finally, because I'm totally out of time. I mean, even wow, our, really? our, our friends in black also use that as a way to, to extract. Absolutely. <laughs> so I they mean, can't be traced. I had a story this morning about, you know, policemen yeah. going around with POS. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I mean, they just get it from the ridiculous. operator yes. and say, we'll pay you something, just let's yes. hold it. So, I mean, and of this, course, there's this, a gun. So. The, the, the entire payment, I think the important thing to just bear in mind is that MSMEs, are, there's so many of them out there, you know, whether it's clothes you're selling, whether it's cakes you're selling, you know, whatever it is, okay. that these services, payment is available across all platforms. Your Instagram account, you can make payments directly from there. Your web, um, your WhatsApp business account, you can wow. make payments directly from there. You can make payments there, from your WhatsApp. Directly from there. So, oh, so you can make purchases on Instagram, on WhatsApp, um, I think on Facebook as well. Twitter hasn't caught up with that yet. Okay. You know, so um, I would want to encourage MSMEs, take full advantage of these things because you have your social media following. How are you converting that to cash? You know, the payment services are there for you to, to use. Again, we can't mention the brand names of these payment service providers, but just do a small Google search and you and you get the information. Integrate that into your account and then you can get your money. Finally, uh, just in a, in a sentence or two, government yeah. policy, what can the authorities do to, to make sure that uh, MSMEs are uh, uh, quickly quickly and faster integrated into um, the payment gateways? I, I think that the policy environment, we have to give credit to the CBN. I think the policy environment as it stands now is um, robust enough. What they probably can do better now is um, enlightenment. They, they need to, you know, so for example, what I'm saying now, a lot of people may not be aware that they can make payments from their WhatsApp business page, you know, so, or they can receive payments from their WhatsApp business page. So um, the CBN and other policy, you know, um, drivers can do a better job of enlightening the large MSME population, you know, using maybe the associations and all of that, um, and NASME um, and all of them, SMICE, you know, um, to get people aware of this thing so that they can take more advantage of it. Interesting. Um, Shegun Shopito, amongst other things, is the chairman of ACT Network. There's something you mentioned before we, we yes, said. Yes, I, I said principal partner Woodridge and Scott Consulting. Woodridge and Scott Consulting. Yeah. We'll keep that in mind. Thank you so much for your time.
and it's I think a, we've learned uh, quite a, a, a number of things from you uh, about making payments quicker on social Absolutely. media. That's really amazing. Absolutely. All right, uh, and that's the size of our package right here on the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Um, it's a good way to end. Uh, if you're a micro, small, and medium enterprise, to take advantage of the payment gateways to make your business faster, make faster sales. My name is Kofi Bartels. To remember, you can follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, on YouTube at Plus TV Africa, and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. We return tomorrow. Good morning.